Many years ago, it was a popular trend to set up a single board computer like a Raspberry Pi to play old games. I still remember people selling Raspberry Pis loaded with retro Pi and ROMs back in the day. By 2021, however, it seemed like this trend had died down a bit. Part of it was because of the Raspberry Pis, especially the Pi 4 at the time, being hard to find in stock at MSRP because of scalpers. Now it's 2024, the supply chain issues are over, and there are plenty of options beyond the new Raspberry Pi 5 to use for a retro gaming box. You also have other options beyond that market like the Mr. FPGA and all the components that you need to buy to set that up. But recently, a new challenger has emerged. Hard Kernel, the makers of the Ojoid line of single board computers, announced the Ojoid H4, the successor to their Ojoid H3 model. The H line of SVCs are powered by Intel CPUs instead of ARM based processors. And I think this newest one has the potential to catch on as a great option for retro gaming in the SBC market. So I'm going to discuss the specs of this device, which is their biggest reason to be excited about it, some key accessories that are available for it, and the overall pros and cons. First off, the specs are extremely impressive for a single board computer. As mentioned before, this board does feature an Intel CPU. But before I get into the CPU use, I have to mention that there are three different models of the H4. There's the regular H4, the H4 Plus, and the H4 Ultra. The H4 and H4 Plus have the same CPU, the N97. The H4 Ultra features the i3 N305 with more cores, but is also significantly more expensive. The H4 Plus is also more expensive, but it does have extra SATA ports and a backup BIOS like the H4 Ultra does. For this video though, we're going to stick to the regular H4 because that's where I think the best bang for the buck is going to be for anyone trying to do an emulation build with this. So going back to the specs, the Intel N97 features 4 cores, 4 threads, and can clock up to 3.6 GHz on max turbo frequencies. It has integrated Intel graphics built in, clocking at up to 1.2 GHz. This is a slightly higher clocked version of the N100 processor that has been used in a lot of cheap Chinese mini PCs lately. As far as performance, even the N100 can emulate GameCube games just fine, as long as you don't try to upscale too much. So the N97 will be more than capable. As far as performance goes, even the N100 can emulate GameCube games just fine as long as you don't try to upscale too high, as in 4K for example. So the N97 will be more than capable. Hard Kernel has already released a benchmark video where they were able to run Auto Modalista in Dolphin at 3x resolution at a stable 60 frames per second. They also showed off God of War 2 on PlayStation 2 via Aether SX2. And outside of a few tiny dips in certain areas, it ran pretty smooth as well, whether it was at native resolution or upscale to 2.25x resolution. But keep in mind that God of War 2 is one of the more demanding PS2 games to emulate. A lot of games are going to run better than that. I'll have a link to the benchmark video in the description. As far as memory goes, you will have to supply your own RAM for this one. You'll need a DDR5 SODEM stick, which is standard for newer laptops. This board has just one SODEM slot and supports up to 48GB of DDR5 memory, running at 4800 MHz. Just get a single 8GB or 16GB stick and you'll be good for emulation. For the storage, you have a few options, but the best one will be to use an NVMe M.2 SSD. This board has one M.2 slot that supports PCIe 3.0 times 4 speeds, allowing for NVMe drives to be supported. This slot is intended for one regular size NVMe M.2 drive. This form factor is known as NGFF2280 to get more technical. The other storage options are to use either a 2.5 inch SATA SSD or eMMC module. EMMC modules are great when the only other option is a microSD card like on the older ARM based Ojoy boards, but there's practically no reason to use one here 
unless you have one lying around already. As far as other specs go, you get a single HDMI port as well as two display ports. The HDMI port is full size unlike the ones on the Pi 5. You get one Ethernet jack that supports up to 2.5 gigabit speeds. For audio, you get a standard 3.5 millimeter jack for output, but you get another 3.5 millimeter audio jack for input. You also get a SPDIF, which is not common on single board computers, but it may be useful in a home theater type of setup. You get four USB ports on the board itself, two of them capable of USB 3 speeds. There is also a passive heatsink already mounted. Next, let's talk about the accessories. The one accessory that's not optional is the power supply adapter. You will need a 15 volt 4 amp power supply for this board to work. It does not support USB-C chargers like a lot of the newer ARM based single board computers do. And I will come back to this point again later in the video when discussing pros and cons. You do get a few options from hard kernel for cases. Some of them are bigger than others, as some support more add-ons that are not going to be relevant for a retro gaming build, for example. For most people though, the Type 1 case should be fine and is also the cheapest option. Amerijoy has it listed for $15 right now. All of these cases allow you to mount a cooling fan inside, which allows you to improve the thermal performance if the passive heatsink isn't cutting it. There's also supposed to be a GameCube themed case coming out in a month or two. A price has not been revealed yet for that one, but I think this would be appealing to a lot of people, including myself as long as it's not too expensive. Another option for cases is to get the Mini ITX kit. The Mini ITX kit allows you to mount the H4 inside of a Mini ITX PC case. This could be a good option if you already have a Mini ITX case lying around that you'd like to use, but I wouldn't recommend this otherwise. There are other accessories I could discuss, like the network card, but that's not going to be relevant unless you're setting up a home server. Now that I'm done discussing the specs and accessories, let's dive deeper into the pros and cons of the H4 starting with the pros. The first pro is obviously emulation performance. As mentioned before, this device can handle GameCube emulation just fine as well as the majority of PS2 games via Aether SX2 without significant slowdown. This also means you should be able to emulate Sega Saturn, Dreamcast, N64, a lot of the more demanding arcade games to run in MAME, and PSP just fine. Just about every Wii game should run fine as well. You may even be able to do low level emulation of N64 for a lot of the library, at least at native resolution. This is easily better than the Raspberry Pi 5, which peaks at the less demanding GameCube and PS2 games via emulation. You'll also be able to play more consoles than you'd be able to on the Mr. FPGA. It won't be quite as good from a latency standpoint or be ideal if you want to play on a CRT TV, but that won't matter to a lot of retro gamers who like retro Pi setups. You don't have to worry much about performance here, at least for emulating consoles from generation 6 and before. Not just that, but the performance benefits go beyond emulation. For example, because you can use an NVMe SSD, you will get extremely fast boot times. Plus, unlike the Raspberry Pi 5, you don't need an extra accessory to mount one, it just works. Another advantage of this board is the versatility of it. This board uses an Intel processor, meaning it's x86 instead of ARM. This means you can boot any operating system that you can boot on your typical desktop, PC, or laptop. Not only can you run an emulation focused OS like Battlestar or Alaka, you can also run Windows 11 or just about any Linux distribution. If you want to, you can do some low end PC gaming, like maybe some indie games or older PC games. You have more options than just emulation here. The last advantage in my opinion is the fact that Hard Kernel has a great reputation with their Ojoid line of single board computers. This may seem like a small thing, but as, as someone who has owned at least two ARM based single board computers from them, the C2 and N2L, I have never had an issue with either one from a hardware standpoint. I gave away my C2 recently, 
but I'm still using the N2L to run Coralec at home and it works great. You almost never see horror stories about their products and they support their boards for a long time typically. Hard kernel is not going to go rogue after a year and tell you to go pound sand. On the other hand, I avoided buying the Orange Pi 5 a while back partially because of their reputation in the single board community. Their reputation is not very good because of their lackluster support for previous boards in the past. However, there are some real cons with the H4 that need to be discussed. The first one, and probably the biggest, is going to be cost. How much of an issue this is will depend on your budget, obviously, but it is more expensive than the 8GB Raspberry Pi 5. First off, instead of going by hard kernels prices, which include absurd shipping costs if you order from their website, I'm going to go by Amerijoy's pre-order prices as they are the main North American vendor for Ojoy products, and most of my audience is probably in North America like I am. Now going by their website, you have to pay about $130 for just the base H4 board, and then about $13 for the power supply. Then let's say you want the Type 1 case. You add about another $15 just for that. After that, you gotta pay for shipping, which for me was around $15 for the cheapest option. Last, you need to buy a stick of RAM, so that's gonna be another $15 to $20. And then about another 25 to 30 bucks if you want a 256 gigabyte NVMe SSD to install. And that's going by Amazon prices, not a Marijoid, assuming you have a Prime membership. It's cheaper for me to buy those things separately from Amazon than adding those things onto your Marijoid order. Once you're finished, you're getting into the $200 price range, and that's if you use Amazon to order some of these things. If you want GameCube and PS2 emulation on your single board computer, this may be worth it. However, if you're just emulating consoles older than Generation 6, you can honestly go cheaper and just get the 4GB Raspberry Pi 5. Even with some accessories and a micro SD card included in the cost, the Pi 5 will be cheaper for older, less demanding consoles you want to emulate. Even the cheap Chinese mini PCs with the N100 CPU are going to be a bit cheaper and perform almost as well on GameCube and PS2 emulation. However, the H4 is still cheaper than a proper Mr. FPGA setup, and as I said earlier, it can play more retro games. The second issue is going to be form factor. Again, your opinion may vary on this, but the fact is this board is bigger than most single board computers on the market. Part of the appeal of a, of a Pi or similar devices is the small form factor and power efficiency. There is something to be said about ha being able to play games on a device that is as small as a credit card. That's part of the appeal of having a retro Pi setup on a device like the Raspberry Pi 5. If you love that form factor, you're not going to get that here. If you're concerned about power consumption, this machine will draw more power than the Pi will. Not to mention you can't even use your USB-C charger you might have lying around because that's obviously not going to give enough power to the H4. I do have one more issue and it is the fact that the cases that could be pre-ordered right now do not look appealing. I'm sure the up upcoming GameCube one will be much better and I'm sure KKSB will make a nice aluminum case at some point. But in my opinion the Type 1 or the other three that are available for pre-order right now will not look great next to your TV. That may not matter to everyone though, but that is not a strength currently and is worth mentioning. Overall, I think the Odroid H4 could be the next great single board computer for retro gaming. Even though it won't be the cheapest option on the market, especially with the extras you need to get it running, it will give people a lot of bang for the buck, and it's from a company that has a solid reputation in this market. If you care about emulating GameCube or PS2, this one should be great as long as you're not pushing the resolution too high. While it's not cheaper than ARM-based boards, it's still cheaper than getting a Mr. setup and buy a lot. I just wish the price would be a little bit lower for the base model, but I'm not sure how much lower hard kernel could have lowered the price due to inflation. But anyways, what are your thoughts? 
Are you thinking about getting something to replace an old RetroPie setup and may consider this as an option? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I am intrigued so far, but I already have a decent PC for emulation purposes so this would just be something extra for me if I decide to buy it. It is up for pre-order currently and it should start shipping soon. But anyways, if you enjoyed this video, like and subscribe for more content like this as well as playthroughs of classic games without cheats or continues. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.